This is an LED, or more commonly known as a light emitting diode. They have transformed the way we light our world, offering energy efficient, long lasting illumination techniques. Unlike old fashioned incandescent bulbs, which rely on heating a filament to produce light, LEDs work by passing electricity through a semiconductor material. This difference brings numerous benefits, including lower energy bills, longer bulb life, and a greener footprint. So let's explore the world of LEDs, one light at a time. So let's have a look at what these does, how they work, and how we can use them in various applications. We're also gonna do some power calculations to know what resistors you need to use on these LEDs whenever you get to actually using them. So without any further hesitation, let's get straight into it. So LEDs in their name, it says light emitting diode. And you might be wondering what are the resemblances to actual diodes? Now, LEDs can only allow current to flow in one direction. So meaning they are polarity sensitive. Unlike normal incandescent bulbs, where you can usually switch them around, the live and the neutral, the positive and the negative, and still gonna turn on, the LEDs don't work quite the same way. You're gonna have to have your positive and your negative connected at the right places. So how do we determine which side is positive and which side is negative? Let's have a look. Here I have a nice little diagram showing you where to find the anode and the cathode. So anode is positive and cathode is negative. You're gonna be able to distinguish which side is the negative side by looking at this flat indent on the LED. We'll have a look at some real LEDs now and so I can show you where to look for that. Another method I've also found which works quite well you're gonna see in here there's like these two flags, or that's what I would like to call them. So there's gonna be a biggest flag and a smaller flag. So I usually have a look on the inside of the LED, if it's visible, which is the bigger flag, and I know that side is negative as well. Another way of also note knowing is if your LED's legs are not the same length, the longer leg is always gonna be your positive and the shorter leg is always gonna be your negative. So let's have a look at a practical example of this. Over here, we have quite a few different colors of LEDs. Now we're gonna to get to that why that is important in just a moment. But for now, I wanna show you how you can distinguish which side is positive and which side is negative and the implications of not connecting it the right way around. So over here, you can see this like this little flag but the bigger flag is always gonna be your negative and the smaller flag is gonna be your positive. If you can't really see the flags, like let's say for instance in this yellow LED, oh, it's quite visible here as well, but sometimes you do struggle to see these little flags on the inside, then you have a look at the length of the legs. Over here we can see there's a shorter leg, which is also connected to the bigger flag, which is always gonna be our negative. And the longer leg is gonna be our positive. Also, when you have a look at the LED like this, I don't know if you can quite see it, but there is a little indent on the negative side. So that's how we determine the polarity of our LEDs. So sometimes you would connect your LED and you would think that, oh, it's not working, I accidentally blew it. But when in fact you're actually connecting it the wrong way around. I've built a little circuit here. If I go ahead and I add this LED, a circuit, there we go. You can see it's not turning on, it's not doing anything. It's like there's no power connected to it at all. But if I go ahead and I turn it around, there we go. It switches on. If I turn my positive and my negative around, it's not gonna turn on. So there we go. I'm gonna take it out again, switch it around, put it back in. And then you're going to see there's no light coming out of this LED whatsoever. It's very important to notice what side you need to connect it to. Now, the next thing I want to talk about are resistors. Now, LEDs, these are quite power hungry things. They are so power hungry that they go about destructing themselves if you don't add a current limiting resistor, as we can see here. Now the current limiting resistor, what it does, it's basically like a little stopper that stops this LED from overeating itself of electricity and thus exploding. So I'm gonna give you an example of this just now. Over here we have our nice current limiting resistor in. Um, our LED turns on 
with no problems and it's quite bright. But what happens if I remove the resistor and connect it straight to 5 volts? So let's go ahead and do that. Move the resistor straight to... Do you see that? It immediately blew. It drew so much current from our Arduino that it actually self-destructed itself. So as we can see, our LED is dead. There's never going to be power on it again. Even if we go ahead and add our resistor back, never going to work again. This can be quite tedious because it's difficult to spot any issues with your LEDs apart from powering them. If we remove this one and add one that's still working, there we go, turns back on again. So do be careful of this. Now, the next question you might be asking is, what resistor value do I use here? Can I just use a random value? Well, not exactly. So random values would give you quite random results. So let's say, for instance, I have this resistor right here. I go about adding this random resistor I've seen laying around. And this one still works. So I got lucky this time. But what happens if I use a resistor that doesn't work? Over here, I have, I have a 300,000 ohm resistor. I know the value, but you might not. So I just want to show you some implications of using random resistors. So over here, the LED is turning on, but it's very dim. So how do we know what resistor value to actually use? There is a nice little calculation for it. To be using the basic fundamentals of Ohm's law, and we'll be running through that to do a few calculations. So, I know not everyone is crazy about math, but Ohm's law is quite important in understanding the basics of electronics and robotics. Think of it as your little helper training wheels when you first get started. As you get more experience and you get more professional in your craft, you're going to start guessing resistor values quite accurately. So, for myself, I generally don't do this equation. I have a thumb suck rule of resistor values that I do use uh, on certain voltages, but there is a way of getting the exact, exact resistor value. So let's have a look at that. This is Ohm's law I've been talking about. Now, as you can see here, it's a basic formula in calculating any given value, volts, amps, or resistance, if any other two values have been given. Now we can see here, that volt is equal to amps times resistance. Amps is equal to volts divided by resistance and resistance is equal to volt divided by amps. An easy way of remembering this is drawing this little triangle to show you the relationships between these values. But the, what does this mean for us? How will we be using this to calculate LEDs? Now, LEDs have, have a thing called a forward voltage. Now, each color of each LED has a different forward voltage and thus will have a different resistance value. So, and all of them, we can generalize them at a current draw of about 20 milliamps. So here we have all of the different forward voltage values for different LED colors. As you can see here, green has a forward voltage of 1.9 volts, red has a forward voltage of 1.6 volts, and what clear white is 3.5, blue 2.4, and yellow 2.1. What we're going to be using is this formula right here because we want to calculate the resistor value. Now the resistor value is still unknown but we do have these other values. So LEDs can draw a maximum of 20 milliamps before they blow. So we can use this as a good indicator of calculating the forward current. So we know that each LED draws 20 milliamps and they have different voltages respectively. So now we can fill these into the formula and thus calculate the resistor values that we are going to need for each LED. So let's start off by with, with green and see if our calculations are correct and if they indeed work. We're going to go here and say R is still unknown. It's equal to volts, which is 1.9 volts there, 1.9 volts divided by current. Now remember that this current is in amps and we know the voltage in milliamps. How you do this, you divide it by a thousand, you get amps to milliamps, so 20 divided by a thousand is 0, 0,02. There we go. And thus we now have it converted to amps. So R is going to be equal to 1.9 divided by 
0 comma 0 2 so r is going to be equal to so r is going to be equal to 95 ohms there we go as you can see here the result is 95 ohms now you might not have an exact 95 ohm resistor so i do recommend always going a bit higher than the actual value that you have gotten here as your led is going to be running at maximum brightness reducing the lifespan of the led by a few years so i'm going to go ahead and use a 100 ohm resistor but i do generally recommending something in the range of 150 to 220. So let's have a look if our 100 ohm resistor is going to do the job according to our calculations. Here we go. Here is our 100 ohm resistor, says 100R. I'm going to go ahead and remove this LED right here or the resistor. I'm going to plug it in, plug in our LED on our board, making sure that the longer leg is going to our positive side. And from the negative leg right here, we're adding in our resistor. There we go. Our LED turns on. It's shining at maximum brightness and it's working great. So we can do another example just to get you guys cleared, cleared up on this and better started. So let's do the red LED next and see if we can calculate its resistance. So in this case, we're still going to be using the same formula where we have R. It's equal to volts, which is 1.6 volts right here, divided by, we have our 20 milliamps, which we've already converted to amps. So divided by 0, 0, 0,02 amps. And from here, we can say respectively that resistance is going to be equal to 1.6 divided by 0, 0, 0,02, and it's going to be equal to an 80 ohm resistor now i unfortunately do not have an 80 ohm resistor but i'm going to be testing our theory with the 100 ohm again and seeing if that works and there we go all of our leds should turn on on this voltage and on the current that we are running them on so there we go all of them are working perfectly so this is how you can calculate LED resistor values with a bit of mathematics. If you don't want to calculate it, here are my general rules. So for 5 volts, I do recommend a 220 ohm resistor. Um, this is going to be very general, generalized. For 12 volts, I recommend a 560 ohm resistor. And on 3.3 volts, something like a 100 ohm resistor works very well. So those are my voltages I have, which are general thumb suck values. I don't generally get the best brightness out of my LEDs, but this tends to work fine uh, for most applications, depending on what you're trying to do. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys did learn a lot regarding LEDs. And now that you can light up someone else's world, I hope that we'll be seeing you here again in the future. Do remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.